The Necrodancer boss has two phases. In phase 1 you want to destroy the stage to get him off it and grab the golden loot. The moment when the stage tile underneath the Necrodancer is destroyed, that's when phase 2 starts. In phase 2 you want to hit the Necrodancer 6 times to kill him. Let's look at phase 1 first and how you can destroy the stage. There are three ways of destroying it. You can either use the button puzzles, bomb it or dig through it with a strong enough shovel. After opening the door to the room, it takes four button puzzles to get to phase two. Ideally, you want three bombs to bomb through the stage quickly without having to do any button puzzles. You bomb underneath the rightmost mummy. Then you bomb the tile above it. And finally, place a bomb between the Necrodancer and the loot to get them both off the stage. If you have four or more bombs, you can bomb the mummies twice to kill them immediately for safety and to save some time. Alternatively, if you don't have enough bombs, you can do a combination of bombs and puzzles. With two bombs, you will need to solve two puzzles first. Then you bomb the Necronancer and then the loot. This is faster but more dangerous. If you want a safer strat, after the two puzzles you can walk around the stage to bomb the loot first and then the Necrodancer. If you only have one bomb, you will have to do three puzzles and then bombing the center. When it comes to digging through the stage, it behaves like a shop wall. Therefore, you need at least a level 4 shovel. That's either a glass shovel or a blood shovel. The glass shovel can only dig one tile as it breaks after digging. You can also use a level 3 shovel with gigantism spell. Level 3 shovels are crystal, obsidian with full multiplier, or the pickaxe using 4 hits. If you have the glass shovel with gigantism, it won't break so you can easily dig through the whole stage. If you happen to have the blood drum, you can also use that with any shovel to dig through the stage. Having a way to dig through the stage on top of also having bombs is a great way to speed up the boss fight, because as long as you can dig at least one tile, you can get a free hit on the Necrodancer. If you dig the tile he is standing on, he won't teleport away and you can hit him with the loot straight away. If you happen to have a gigantism scroll or a shield spell, you can use them just before entering phase 2 of the fight. This significantly increases the duration of the buff because of an exploit of the in-game beat counter. The game starts counting beats when the song starts. For example, the shield spell lasts for 11 beats. And the way the game determines when to remove the shield buff from you is based on the beat you use it on. Let's say you use the shield spell on beat 30. Then the game knows to remove the shield buff on beat 41. However, when you get to phase 2 of the Necrodancer fight, a new song starts and the beat timer is set to 0 again. So you can have a shield for 41 beats now. Ok, let's move on to phase 2. In phase 2, the Necrodancer starts moving around. He either moves on every other beat, spawns some monsters or a miniboss, or uses a spell. At first it might seem quite frustrating to catch him, but once you understand how he moves around, you can use that to lure him towards you. The Boots of Leaping are also really good for this phase, making it really easy for you to catch him, but if you don't have them, it's best to learn some lure strats. So the way the Necrodancer moves is, he will always try to move towards you if you're far away enough. There is sort of a 4 block radius around him, if you're in that 4 block circle, he will move away from you. I have used my amazing photoshop skills here to show how he moves around. When either Cadence or Dorian is standing in the red area, the Necrodancer will move away. If you're standing in the green area, he will move towards you. The sweet spot for you is the light blue area. If you're standing on one of those tiles and wait one beat, he will move towards you. Staying two blocks away and then you can get an easy hit. The easiest way to remember it is to be standing four blocks away from him horizontally and one block up or down or 4 blocks vertically and 1 block left or right.
Lures are kind of tricky to get right, so it's good to practice them for a while. Then you will start noticing the pattern 4 plus 1 automatically, and learn to adjust to it. It is good to try and get Dorian away from Cadence, because he can mess up the lures. Also remember the Necrodancer's spells. He either uses a freeze in two cones, left and right, just like the blue dragon, or a 5x5 five five explosion that deals a good bit of damage. It is often good to approach him from above or from below to avoid his freeze spell. Once he raises his arms up to use his spell, he will either use a freeze spell after 2 beats or the explosion after 4 beats. So quickly charging at him while he's charging his spells up might be a good idea. Ideally from below or above him to avoid getting frozen. Do not charge him from too far away if you don't have enough time to hit him. You could get caught in the explosion and he will teleport away. If you see him charging an explosion, it might be the best to just try to move to his next location. Here I am demonstrating some lures. Try and notice the 4 plus 1 pattern. Finally, remember that the Necrodancer fight might be slightly different to regular game mechanics because you play as two characters instead of one. For example, keep in mind that if you have the Bomb Charm, it will protect both Cadence and Dorian from explosions. However, if you also have a Blast Helm, Dorian will take damage. Also, healing will no longer give you iframes, so you can't, for example, use the heal spell or eat food to prevent damage, so be careful of that. That about sums up the Necrodancer in detail. Thanks for watching.